Hello once again everybody, last time RTS Colt was able to pull ahead with his famous stun grenade build and Burek took a loss in game 1. Game 2 coming up next, can Burek figure out how to handle the mass production of RTS Colt or will RTS take the win to proceed to the finals? Too sketchy, I hope you caught a break after last game cause she's all yours. Thank you and yes welcome to game 2 of the semifinals here at an unknown location in space and time. With the last victory going to RTS Colt in hopes of redemption, will Burek be able to scrap enough loot for himself to victory? Well, let's see what elites and doctrines they have brought to this matchup today. And I'm guessing it's going to be very similar to the ones that we've been seeing. Um, RTS Colt at the bottom half of the map, we do have Venerable Dreadnought, Jonah Orion, Kill Team Iron Maul. His doctrines are Scout Strike, Improved Listening Post, and Destructor Devastation, nothing has changed. As well as the other side of the map, we do have Björk as the Orcs with Storm Boys, Weird Boy Zopnagan, and Buta Demarkanaut utilizing tons of bombs, healing scrap, and long range rockets. I do think he changed up his tons of bombs. I want to say there was something different he had last game. I can't recall exactly what it is. However, let's just get this game going, shall we? Press and resume, undoing the fog of war, and here we go. Check out the build order that's coming up. Within the first couple seconds, we do have one Gretchen out of Burek and two boys following that build. RTS Colt, very similar build orders as he has in the previous games. One Servitor coming out, the other one close behind it, and the third one coming out of the uh, Stronghold, followed by what seems to be a Tactical Marine in a drop pod. Finally, we can see some drop pod icons. We do have the bears coming down near the resource point here at the bottom half of the map. And Burek is building his... I thought it was a Watt Tower at first, but it is a boy's hut. But the small amount of lumpy scrap you saw, I thought that was a Watt Tower at first. He did capture the top half. And seeing what he did in the quarterfinals, RTS Colt is capturing what I would say... And what everybody knows that is if, if you split this map in half, this side belongs to RTS Colt and this side belongs to Burek. However, he always, and he did this last time too, versus Gendromeron, putting up a server to her cap in this. He looks like he also launched out the Observer Skull, the Skull Observer, and now he's just going to sit here. Last time he did this, he scouted this out and he called down a drop out. I'm curious if, he, if he's going to utilize the strategy again. And he's also building a listening post here and capturing this point. point. Pulling out a servitor either to cover. Don't mind him. He's just going to walk this off and he does call in the drop pot. I don't think Burek is ready for this engagement at all. Kind of hit him out of left field. And here he goes. Trying to... At first he was chasing the servitor but he changed his mind. Now he's chasing the tactical marine which do get a shield coming out of the drop pod. He needs to be careful because right behind him... We do have our first snipers coming out. They are setting up, and there they go with the DPS. Bjork needing to back up. Very, very similar tactics that he utilized in the qualifying game versus Gendromeron. Very similar. Except Bjork seems to micro his units just a bit better. Just as I say that, it looks like one of his Gretchens was about to die. They are going to take a little peekaboo trick and hide inside the uh, stealth cover here. It does belong to Burek still. However, I think his servitor did pick up that he's shouting. I think he did hear that sound. The skill ability does make a noise. And i pretty positive the servitor is going to take a dive. The shield did not even break through the first rounds of the sniper. So safely being able to back up. Looks like most of the action is going to be happening down here. With Just poking at each other right now in the beginning. Utilizing healing scrap right now by picking up what was left over from the drop pod at the first tactical marines that RTS Colt was able to call in. Here we are. We do have the first WA going off. He so far has built a WA tower and a boys hut. He does have a Gretchen way over here for vision. However, we got to be careful because I don't know where he's going to gauge on. Engage on. It looks like RTS Colt doesn't know either, so he backs up his unit. He could essentially take him through here and hit the shield generator. But no, he cuts a heart right right here. And RTS Colt is kind of just waiting for him to engage. And he's curious himself where he's going to be at. 
So one of his servitors does scout his army out. Tons of bombs comes in a little late. Completely being able to dodge that. Looks like the standard is going to be coming down. Boys have to back up. And here comes the chain CC. The RTS Colts build is famous for doing. Throwing one stun. Throwing another stun. And just utilizing the DPS and the tactical marine scouts. And possibly even the snipers if they were to get, if they were to get the set up. And here come the four minute mark. Perfect timing to be in a fight for Kill Team Iron Maw to be summoned. Pushing back the orcs. And this could essentially lead him into getting this point and or doing enough damage. Bjork is not even worried about it. He should put his units in here. However, he is moving them to the left away from the shield generator. I think he now realizes that, oh no, I should have definitely put some units in here. He, however, did build a Gretchen, so I'm pretty sure that he's going to put a Gretchen here eventually. And just being calm and collective about this situation right now. Being able to just put a Gretchen in there, knowing that he has no melee units. So once the Gretchen gets in there, he's, the Gretchen is not going to be in danger. He stealths, perfect timing, so no one's going to be able to get vision of him. Unless he brings in a Servitor, which he might do. Looks like he's casting. Yep, he sure is casting the uh, Detected Area. And Burek again just building up his forces with Wild Towers and not panicking at all. Reinforcing whatever he has. And what he does have is three shooters and a pair of boys right there. One pair of boys I should say. Versus RTS. Again, a massive amount of scouts. A one sniper unit and one tactical marine. Looks like he's building an arsenal just now, and I did hear, <laughs> looking at the icon, we do have Zap Noggin on the field before the Storm Boys. And again, holding on to that Zap Noggin is going to be vital because his AO damage, he does find <laughs> a little bit overkill there. Also, he missed that ability, but Zap Noggin found the Servitor. Also, a fight going on on the left side of the map. I feel like this is going to be an intense fight everywhere. This is a wide open map. A little bit larger than the map they previously just played on in game one. Here comes a drop pod. Curious where it's going to land. He's aiming for the uh, shooter boys. However, it's just some scout marines being able to stun up the units. And don't mind my servitor walking through. RTS Colt says I need him. And he does pull him out. <laughs> being surrounded by what was Zap Noggin and two shooter boys. <laughs> servitor was just able to take a walk right by them. Bjork is intending to charge at, at his enemy. Queuing up what seems to be another Wa, And a Wa tower is being built. I'm looking at the map right now. It looks like we have a Gretchen coming out. He's trying to scout out and get as much information as he can. Probably before he charges in. He's setting Zap Noggin towards the shield generator. However, there is a serv Servitor here being able to scout this out. I'm curious to how RTS is going to position himself. Yep, he sure is going to find out that Bjork is intending on hitting up this shield generator. So here we are. Here come the scouts. They are stealth until they engage. Right now, they are visible. RTS Colt pretty much used all of his abilities right there. I think he has a few more grenades here or there. But these are out of position completely. These shooter boys should not be up that far. If anything, the boys themselves should be. Zapnog is looking for that ability. He's throwing out his E. RTS Cole, easy to dodge that. Moves to the left. And if anything were to hit that, he could reinforce himself with the barracks being nearby. And he did get a significant amount of damage done on the shield generator while this was happening. Look at that. Half health. Utilizing with... Sorry, mixing it up with the shooter boys and just boys themselves. I think he even threw some tons of bombs in there to be able to expose some of this damage early on. And again, coming back for round two right now. He's probably going to reinforce as much as he can. And not giving RTS Colt a break at all. Here we are. Detect the area. Curious by who it was by. It's actually by this server to itself. RTS Colt trying to find these Gretchens. As if he knew where these Gretchens were going to be. Looks like Bjurg's turn to detect the area. And these scouts are revealed. I'm curious to how Bjorg is going to be able to handle this attack right now. He sends three shooter boys towards what seems to be a lot of, yep, a lot of servitors. Immediately, RTS reacts to this. And he puts them back to try to repair this. 
This is just health that he needs to chunk through to be able to get through this, and which buys him time for the scout marines to answer. To get over here in time and push back the orc shooter boys. Interesting setup right now we have going on. We have two fights at once. One on the left, one on the right. And looks like Bjork is actually trying to windle down his opponent. And I don't know if RTS Colt has enough firepower to even attempt a push unless he gets lucky by stunning up some units with his stun grenades. We do have Storm Boys being called up here at the almost 10 minute mark. Let's assemble our troops. Bjork says getting them near the wall tower that's about to set off the wall. Looks like even the Storm Boys are joining in. Getting in the AoE right here. Getting as close as possible. And I'm curious to how he's going to utilize both of his heroes and the good mix of army he has right now. He even shouts with his boys. Looks like Zap Nog is going to make his first move down here. And even RTS Colt split his unit up a little bit here, a little bit there. Zap Noggin does move in first right now. We do have... Oh my god, he did cue that really well. And I think he's mostly focused on the shield generator right now. And here come the scouts. But as you can tell, he did send the Storm Boys up here to harass this point as this is happening. And here comes the chains. One, two, stun grenades. Here comes the E ability, the other Zap Naga. I don't know if he's going to be able to move it out in time. He only gets about two units. And the Q ability does so much damage just in time before the shield proc from the standard. The damage did come through. And then the shield actually activated. So just... Whoo! Man, he got lucky there. He snuck that damage just in time. He can still teleport out of there if he needs to. But I don't think he's in any danger right now. The Storm Boys were able to harass this in point. This point just in time. For I think RTS even realized what was happening. <laughs> Here come mine, 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 mines. <laughs> for RTS Colt. Putting mines down everywhere. It almost seems like RTS really didn't take that much loss. I think he may he might have just lost a boy and a shooter. And this. Shield generator is getting chunked down. Bjerg being stubborn with a storm boy. Leaving him up here to constantly harass this. And will most likely pay the price for setting servitors here consistently. But however, here comes the squad of stealth scouts. Missed the first one and I'm sure he has several others queued up in there. I mean, as you can tell, I don't even know how many that is, but... I hear the wall going off. Curious to how he's going to be utilizing this. These storm boys might be able to queue across, but I don't know if he's going to do that. Missing several grenades and then suicide squad. He did try to jump, but it got completely canceled. These units are so vital to RTS Colt, and it doesn't look like they're going to be over. They're not going to be able to get over here in time and even be utilized properly because they have like no health after the storm boy suicide squad. Here comes Zap Noggin's E ability, and I don't think he's even aiming for the, the amount of units here. He's aiming for the shield generator, which is almost done with 47 health left. Zap Noggin is just trying to do as much damage as he can in a spread out format, trying to hit as many units because RTS Colt loves just right there. There you have it. Loves having a lot of units, but they do have very minimal amount of health. It's just a matter of fact, it's just a matter of hitting your AoE, which is hard to do because one, you can't really see them. It's hard to first of all see them, and second of all, it's just so many of them, and there's so much other things happening, and he's utilizing Jonah and Kill Team Armor to keep people at bay. Let's see what Zap Noggin does. Jonah Orion hiding in the stealth cover right there, and he figured, you know what, ah, I think I feel like I'm a bit out of position, so he sneaks him by Zap Noggin. Bjerg realizes that, why is Jonah Orion right near me? <laughs> Seems like another wild's going off. Something's happening up here. Looks like Gretchen's are going to take a dive. No! Bjerg, Michael's him. Ow! No! He does take a dive. Killer cons are being made here and there. And there's a huge reveal. If Zap Noggin were to cue this right now, but it looks like he's getting stunned over and over and over. And drop pods on top of drop pods. If he were to get that cue ability off right then and there, I feel like RTS Colt might have lost 90% of his military right there. But he was not able to because he did get chain seed seed. Oh man, that was so unfortunate for Bjork right there. I definitely feel like he's utilizing Weird Boy a bit better than he was last game. Hitting the combos when it matters. 
Storm boys are consistently harassing points here and there whenever he can. I don't know if he's going to be able to get them out. He is. He does pay attention and micro them out of whatever harm they're in. And RTS Colt is still sending over servitors over there every now and then just to keep this alive. And it doesn't take much to do that. They only cost just... A, how much do they cost? 50. That's right. It's the same across. Right? It's the same across both... both uh, both races. I should know these things. <laughs> it's alright, guys. So here we go with another wild. We do have two Killicons. And this is pretty much gone. I mean, there's so much health still on the shield itself. But the shield generator within the shield is merely just at a few points. As last time we looked at it, it was like 47 hit points. He is attacking us. We have a lot of scout marines being able to toss out their chain CC stun grenades here and there over and over but it looks like Zap Noggin from the Fog of War was able to cast his E ability and Q almost if not more than half of the scout marines the RTS Colt was able to build holy moly knowing that the majority of his army is right here though I wonder if Burek is going to be able to utilize his Killicons long range rocket it looks like it is open and he is sending one squad of Killicons over here <laughs> RTS is like, no, no, no. I need to put someone in here to be able to proc the shield. The Killicon does step up. And he uses what was one auto attack to get this. Now look at the resources that Bjork is sitting on. Nearly 1,500 wreck and 200 power. Let's check out RTS Colts. He does have a superior number amount versus what Bjork has. However, the sheer amount of money that Bjork is sitting on right now really is going to matter in the finishing game of this finishing act of this game I'm sorry but I'm thinking about what should Burek be building to be able to counter this and or maybe not even engage in this but build towards finishing the game that's where it really lies because Burek seems to be the type of player that focuses on the objective during a game for example the shield generator instead of utilizing E Zap Noggin's E ability to stun up what was multiple units right here he cast it just perfectly enough to maybe stun one unit on the side but he was mainly focusing on the shield generator itself we did have a while going off storm boys again harassing the point all the way to the right zap noggin stepping up all by himself acting like jonah ryan in several past games he does have a lot of shields and just queuing everything in his vicinity it seemed like there was a bunch of mines here that he was able to uncover and the killer cons right here long rockets right now i think two or three of them missed however they did hit the turret Holy moly. To some hit and run right now. Playing like some Eldar players. Both of them just hit and run on both sides. Storm boys again. Utilizing their just agility and being able to get in and out of combat. I don't know if he's going to be able to get this improved listening post down in time before the scout marines step up. However, he does feel in danger right now with being on low health. He does cue them out. There's a death dread that he built after... Getting the shield generator, using the requisition and the power to be able to harass the middle point right now. And I do hear a wall tower going off. Killicons are affected. Shooter boys, boys, Waz, Maka, Luda boys, everybody that pretty much Bjork owns right now is affected. And it seems like RTS Colt might be out of position here to defend the turret being harassed. Killicons stop being microed. However, they are. Uh, taking damage from the turret barely, barely micros them out now he is at a choke point in between what seems to be the turret objective and all these scouts zap noggins trying to keep them at bay we do have the long range rockets coming out from the killicons zap noggins still in the fight i don't know if he used his ability yet seems like he just got stunned up and he's not being able to utilize that because of the stun grenades a two day zap noggin does take a dive due to the predator destructor and so, finally, something good happened for RTS Cole. It seems like he was playing a bit defensive here and there. Brewick being the puppeteer of this game right now, forcing him to adjust to everything that he was throwing at him. And again, Death Dread with looted scrap, giving him the shield to be able to withstand some of the damage that comes out out of this improved listening post. RTS again having to respond to whatever Brewick is sending at him. Stepping back again with the Death Dread. And we did have an squad of knobs i didn't realize when he built this but it probably oh boy beauty de Morcana is available after getting the turret and a shield generator you do get a significant amount more elite points 
just by getting those two objectives. I think that's what Brewer was counting on. We do have Stormboy's harassing this point again. And I think RTS Cole is aware that he consistently has been doing this. However, he sends a squad of knobs in there. I'm curious to how he's going to be able to hold off what seems to be an entire army of RTS because he's sending a death dread here to start harassing points. I don't know if he's trying to reinforce that with anything else, but he does have RTS Colt's army split in half, and this is going to take a while for him to be able to get through this, and the explosive armor does go off. These guys are considered to have heavy armor, and these only do what seems to be 6 DPS on normal armor, normal damage, and only counters normal armor. However, Brook is sitting all the way at his core already with a Death Dread. Too many things are going on at once. I think the players are negating some of their ability to micro every single unit on the map. Brewick did lose his Kelecons. He did lose his Death Dread. However, Beauty the Morkana is what is important right now. And Beauty the Morkana is up. He does send out his Q ability. And it is Mega Blast. Stunning them up. Slowing them down. Doing damage over time. Oh, Jonah Ryan barely gets out of there. Man, there's so many units that people are barely being able to get out just in time. And it looks like this knob was able to utilize just the sheer aggressiveness and amount of armor he's able to have to withstand what was pff, dozens of scout marines. Now, you saw the damage that they're able to do, which is pretty much none at all. It wasn't until the, the stun came down and the improved listening post helped out to get down that knob. Woo! It doesn't look like RTS Colt has much left, but we do see a lot of Predators being built. And it looks like another one. Let's check out his build right now. We do have a Predator here. We will have three. There it is. The third one coming out right now. Let's follow in his screen for a little while. Man, his, his loadout down at the bottom. All those portraits. That's a lot of portraits. We do have a Daka hut here. I'm curious if... No, nope, it doesn't look like Bjerg ever built a mech shop just yet. Zap Noggin is being summoned right now. I don't know where he's at. Where is he? Alright, there he is. Near the shield generator. There's the mech shop. I'm sorry. I should have known that it was the mech shop. There's just a gap right here. He never built a Daka hut, which is wrong too, because the Daka is right here. The boy's hut is right here. This just seems to be a bug. My apologies. However, getting back to the game right now, it looks like the Waz is going off, utilizing the big track's ability to put down mines just to scout out the area and make sure that nobody comes through here. Beauty Demorcanot not being affected by the Waz that just set off. However, he, ha he has him ready here to harass the middle point. And it looks like RTS Colt is waiting for the attack. After the song of Wa went off, now... Getting vision of where his enemy actually is. Looks like he's sending his scout units there with some predators. Oh, this could be the big push that RTS is waiting for. If he can utilize the stun grenades properly. However, you got to be careful because this is the same position last time where Wazmaka, not Wazmaka, but Zapnogon was able to utilize his E combo. Got to be careful with positioning the scouts right there. And there it is. It's going to come out out of the fog of war. I don't think RTS Colt is prepared for this. However, Burek does miss this. Beauty, Beauty the Markana does hit them with the Mega Blast, blast right there. Being able to chunk that instead of Zap Noggin. Q ability does come down. And we do have artillery fire from the rear of the big tracks from Burek. Shooting down from above. RTS Colt getting kind of desperate and just stunning up whenever he can stun up. With Predators doing enough damage to this so it wouldn't be utilized anytime soon. While I'm saying that, however, if you're looking at the power core health right now, it does look like he sent some some tank buses over here to do enough damage. I think RTS Colt right now feels the pressure. However, Rox was being called in. <laughs> it looked like RTS Colt accidentally held onto it and carried it out further. These units are not going to be able to mass recall because they're considered to be in combat by taking damage from the meteor. I guess you can call it. It is called Rox, though. Some units were able to be recalled. Just the damage itself on the core. I think RTS 
felt the pressure and just had to press recall immediately. This is giving an advantage to Burek. The field is open for him. It's just a matter of how he's going to engage and rush in. Again, Stormboy is on the side, consistently being utilized to harass the point. We do have another big track coming out. And again, utilizing, I don't know where it land, landed, but the mines from the big tracks, keeping whatever Space Marines, there's something right here. There's another set right there. Keeping the Space Marines at bay, if they were to engage, I think RTS Colt. Oh, buddy. Venerable Dreadnought. It's come to the point where late game heroes are going to be the most vital ones. We do have every elite for RTS Colt on the map. And it looks like he's setting up for an assault. However, big tracks are able to find them and see them. And that's why shooting from afar is being utilized right now. Very, very curious to how they're going to go about this. It really does look like RTS Colt wants to run in and assault what seems to be the shield generator for Bruik. And I don't know if Bruik is ready to defend this just yet. He does set off the wall. This will be the fight to decide who wins game number two of the semifinals. I think Bruik getting in position. He can either rush to the power core itself, but I don't know if he is aware of what's there right now, so he doesn't want to risk it. I think might might have to fight this. It's the better idea right now. He does have four Kilicons available, and he does utilize some of the just normal DPS and then long rockets right there. And he does have them surrounded. What seems to be orcs everywhere. Even the big track is right here. And just big tracks and Kilicons themselves. He hasn't even moved his line units yet. RTS Colt seems to just not micro as well once the venerable dreadnought came here zap noggin easily kisses him on the cheek and backs up into the stealth and it looks like he ran out of units rts sitting on just a few scouts and that's pretty much it rts gives up ladies and gentlemen bruick for game number two taking the win i'll say that bruick played a lot better it definitely landed a few more skill shots and utilized Storm Boys really well by harassing certain points left and right and never losing them as much as he did the first game versus the chain stun CC grenades that RTS loves to pull off. Um, it also seems that Burek was able to puppeteer him a bit more and force him to fights that he might have not wanted to be in, if you know what I mean, and then absolutely using Killicons to perfection. For First, getting the shield generator down just in time before the scout was able to proc the shield gen shield, and then utilizing long rockets on the turret to be able to get a huge advantage to build an army big enough to be able to withstand whatever RTS Colt was throwing at him. RTS Colt felt like he had to push at one point, which was towards the end, but Bruick had enough of an army to answer to whatever he was throwing at him, and RTS Colt just fell just, just a tad bit short. So, with that said, give it back to you, Too Sketchy. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, RTS Colt win streak finally brought to an end. Tying the series one to one, whoever wins next game will proceed to the finals versus Vindicare X. Stick around, because the final game of the semis is coming up next. See you then.